Welcome to my channel. If you have three Corsairs in your inventory, you should start building one. In this video, I show how to open a panel, improve the cockpit with the Quinta Studio set, add a lot of rivets, get problems with blue and hope to save the project. Let's start building the model. The F4U Corsair is one of my favorite warbirds. As a model, the Tamiya versions in 148 scale are very popular. If you want to build a later version, Hobby Boss is a good alternative. Hobby Boss offers almost every version of the Corsair for an affordable price. I choose a Korean War era F4U5 with US Navy markings. The kit makes a good impression and has some better details than the older Tamiya kit. The plastic is rather soft, we will see how the fit is. First, I opened up the air intakes to get a realistic look. The engine is very detailed, so I wanted to open a panel to get a better view of the interior. After cutting and cleaning, I used plastic card to build the internal structure of the engine cover. After the first modification was completed, the cockpit awaited assembly and improvement. Out of the box, the cockpit parts offer good details, but I wanted to go a different route. After preparing the cockpit parts for painting, the assembly of the landing gear base and wing structure continued. The fitting of the gun cover was not good and required additional work. Not necessary hobby was, especially since no guns are included in the kit. Now the first phase of painting could begin. First I primed all the metal parts black. The cockpit parts got AK Real Colors interior green directly. I later sprayed on the metal colors in thin layers. Exhaust parts were sprayed with pale burnt metal. After being primed with white, the propeller got the usual yellow tips. The rear wheel construction looked very complicated at first. Contrary to my expectations, it was easier to build than I thought. The kit offers the option to display the wings folded, which is what I wanted to do. I left the details of the folding mechanism unchanged. Here you could attach additional cables to increase the level of detail. Next, I completed most of the external parts, such as flaps, rings, rudders, external fuel tanks and wheels.
The reels have been sanded down to look weighted and the tire profile has been refined. There was a small mistake here. I had to remove the inner wall of the cockpit because I wanted to use 3D decals. I blame the instruction for that, right? The Quinta 3D decal set takes the cockpit to another level. The details can also be seen well on the finished model, so in my opinion the effort is absolutely worth it. Now the engine is assembled. The details are good out of the box and can be upgraded with additional cables if required. Further details in the cockpit and on the engine are painted on with a brush. For this I mainly use acrylic paints from Vallejo and AK. Here I start with the main color Vallejo Glossy Sea Blue, but more on that later. Now it's time for weathering in the cockpit area and interior. I use different washes, weathering pencil and seal everything with clear varnish at the end. Assembling the cockpit is one of my favorite parts of the build. It's like finishing a small model. Enjoy the high quality pictures before the construction continues. In addition to the cockpit improvements, I focused on the rivets to enhance the surface of the model. The time you invest here really pays off. Further details will be brush painted 
before the fuselage halves are assembled. The tail rear suspension required some patience, but overall there were no problems assembling the fuselage. I was pleasantly surprised at how everything came together. Of course, you can't compare it with current kits from well-known manufacturers, but if you take the time and prepare the parts well, you will get a good result. After sanding and filling some parts, I restored lost panel lines and rivets. Now all parts were ready for painting. After a thorough cleaning with isopropanol, I started priming. The first layers of paint were applied and everything went smoothly. I applied Vallejo chipping fluid to all desired parts as usual. After it dried, I started spraying the other colors. Unfortunately, the result was not as expected. I sprayed thin layers, but the coverage wasn't very good. After trying, a speckled pattern formed and I was seriously concerned. I tried to cover it with additional layers, which partly helped. In some places I had to sand the paint. I lost some river details due to too much paint, but overall I was able to save the project. So far, I haven't had any problems with chipping fluid. 
Outside temperatures were very hot during spraying. Maybe that's one reason. I'll definitely be careful in the future. After all the problems, I was surprised that the shipping fluid could be activated as usual. Now the chipping process started with a cocktail stick and a stiff brush. The yellow primer color gives a nice contrast to the blue main color and makes the model look more interesting. The chipping on the propeller was too strong for me, so I sprayed some NATO black again. Now all parts have been sealed with clear varnish to prepare the model for the decals. If you don't like applying decals, then Hobby Boss is perfect for you. The decal sheet is limited to the most necessary. The decals are thin and easy to apply, but the color coverage isn't the best. Here the anti-clear layer is sprayed. Don't forget to give them a matte clear coat at the end. Now the weathering starts with a panel line and a rivet wash. Another layer of clear coat is applied, flat this time, to create a creepy base for the oil paints. I use a selection of oil colors to increase the color modulation. A small amount of oil paint is applied and wrapped into the matte clear coat. Later everything is blended with a soft brush. The faded blue does a good job of breaking up the dark main color.
I really like to use metal oil paint for dry brushing. This makes it very easy to highlight details. The final layer of clear coat is already applied here. I used semi-gloss and added some flat clear coat to the areas that were too shiny. I apply metal chipping here after the model has been sealed with clear coat, so as not to lose the metallic shine. Final steps are taken and I start to complete the model. Positioning the folded wings correctly was still a small challenge, but I was able to master it. Despite the problems with the painting, I had a lot of fun building it. I learned a lot again and I hope you liked the video and the finished model. Now enjoy the final result. Leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel if you like. See you next time.